Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, and in double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you out there pushing this word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abad from the gym at Houston County. And uh, I want to go into a quick little lesson, you know, uh, concerning America destruction, you know, which in the, in the scriptures, America is known by that whole, that great whore, you know, um, that's mainly responsible for not just the wickedness that's going on in within herself, <laughs> you know, within America, but uh, across the four corners, you know, how she, you know, a Babylon a great, which is known as that virgin daughter, but in, in reality, she ain't a virgin, you know, she ain't a virgin. Right, ain't doing deals with buku different nations. She'll do deals with nations who they might be enemies, but she's doing deals with both of them. You know, then break the deals, <laughs> treaties, and so on and so forth, man. You know, yeah, there's many things wrong with this place, but it, nevertheless, though, you know, yeah, even if you know in our in our world, you know, what's known for a hoe, right? What eventually a hoe go experience, man? <laughs> that burning sensation <laughs> That burning sensation, man This is the truth, you know, that burning sensation, man You know, sleeping around with many different men You know, unprotected Which America, uh, hey, unprotected right now Ain't got no, you know, your military ain't up to par And the scriptures say so Your military ain't up to par Your missile defense systems ain't about to stop nothing Right? So you unprotected and doing all what you have been doing, now your wickedness have been found out. It's been found out. Damn, bro, I thought she was a virgin. Uh, like R. Kelly and Usher, uh, talking to the same girl. And they, <laughs> nations find, finding out everything about this place, man. It ain't the land of the free home or the brave. But truly, it's, it's the land of, of oppression, man. Of oppression, you know, on uh, injustice, you know, injustice, unbalance. So on and so forth. Well, look, the judgment that's coming to America is the same judgment that will come to a whole. And it's cold that the Lord got America described as a whore, right? Hey, a virgin, <laughs> a, a virgin, that good girl, you know, them good girls always, and freaky ones, you know. But it's cold, too, because when her judgment come, it's going to be by fire. And the Lord even got, <laughs> you know, this lesson just is impromptu, something I was just, med you know, meditating on. You know, and it's, you know, in transit as well. So it's a lacking for the background noise. But, uh, you know, all of this little rocket, you know, little rocket rolls and shit, little rumbling rolls. But anyway, the Lord even got the missiles was going to bring the fire shape, shape like, like <laughs> penises, though, you know, shape just like it. Hey, that's the perfect judgment for a hole. You want to be a hole? Well, look, I got many of them coming to you. And then when they hit you, going to burn. <laughs> when they hit you, going to burn, man. That's exactly what's coming to America, right? But uh, let me let's get into the scriptures. I don't want it to be too long. The phone just on twenty percent, and if I hook it up to the car, it's gonna play over the speaker, and it's you know gonna be start tripping. But let's get this first. In Baruch, let's start in Baruch. Right, this uh Baruch full towards the end of the chapter. Because it goes into our salvation. And we know once the same day we get saved, that's the same day America go be hit with fire. Uh, other places like Israel go be hit with fire. Right? But the end of it, it goes into our salvation. And what's going to happen to the, the places that oppressed us. And it's going to mention that main place, that, that woman. Right? Let's get straight to the point. Uh, this Baruch 4. And... I'm going to start straight to the point 29. It says, for he that brought these plagues upon you, right, put us in captivity, which is the most high. He did that to us. It says, for he that brought these plagues upon you shall bring you joy, shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Right? So there all these things going to happen when we get saved. It says, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Check this out. It says, but miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice that thou fall. You go into Revelation 11. You know, we talk about once, you know, we was dead, not having a truth, not knowing who we who we are as a people or were as a people. Right. That these nations rejoiced over us. They became rich off our ignorance, you know, off free labor. Right. 
these nations became rich, man. And it says, uh, even us, you know, Jake, the biggest consumers, you know. But it says, uh, but miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. And the main city we serve is the main place of our captivity, which is Babylon the Great. That's also in Revelation 11. That great city, you know, where our dead bodies was, that's that same hole. <laughs> That's that same hole. Now, although our people scattered to the four corners, as the apostles, elders, been touching on this past week, but the main hub of our deliverance, where the truth begin, is here in America, man. It only makes sense, man. It only makes sense. So it says, "Miserable is she that received thy sons, received them on us on slave ships." It says, "For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her." From the everlasting long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. And that's what we about to we in the beginning stages of that. We in the beginning stages of her shame being seen. Let's matter of fact, let's get that in Isaiah 47. And the ending of that shame being seen is fire go come upon her from the everlasting, which is from the most high. It says long to endure. The most high been want to get been want to get his rocks off, man. Been want to destroy America. But for prophecy's sake. He had to let his word play out, man. You know? He had to let his word play out. And like it said in Roman nine, Romans 9, um, endured a long time, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Right, that's the Edomites. Mainly the place that they, they rulership is here in Babylon, the great America. Right, but let's get this real quick. Isaiah 47 and 1, it says, come down. Right, hey, good look, yeah, come down. America been exalted, just like Capernaum. Yahweh Shai said, O thou Capernaum, which is exalted unto heaven. Now, what's Capernaum? Literally, you know, the, the, the tip of a building and sitting right there by the most high throne, you know? No, it's talking about the, the, the way of life, you know, that rich way of living, that careless lifestyle, right? Well, now, America was living the same way, lifted up to heaven, you know? And if you ain't living, you was the thing, the streets here was literally paved with gold, you know? Land of opportunity. You know, you're most millionaires and billionaires, right? But it's, the Lord says, come down. It's time to come down from that now. It says, come down and sit in the dust, O who? O virgin, daughter of Babylon. <laughs> now, why is it likened to a virgin? Because when you look at all the, all the world, America have never been likened or equal to the places of these other countries in the world. In other words... Like these other nations known for war, Iraq, known for having war in their land, in third world countries. America never been looked at as a third world, world country. Ain't no major wars never went on here for the people to be in fear of their lives, right? That's why it's a virgin, you know? It says, uh, but here you, yeah, you on TikTok, <laughs> right? Happy hour. Yeah, you can do that type of stuff here. TikTok, happy hour, and TV all day, right? But it says, uh, but now it's time the law about to change that, man. Like it's saying, Jeremiah 51, when it talked about Babylon the Great, it says, look, your end has come. Yeah, America, end has come, and it's coming by way of fire. Greatest destruction, shit. Known the man and not known the man, it says, sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. You no more will be looked at as this perfect nation, right, who do right. Think about a whole, a whole. Yeah, she can go on for a little minute. You got buku different dudes on the phone, and they might not know about each other for for a time. Then eventually they turn it to you know Usher and 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 R. Kelly. You 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 realize y'all talking to the same girl, you know, barebacking, <laughs> barebacking. You know, it was a lot. I don't mean don't mean to be vocal, but it's the truth. Right, she get caught up all on Instagram, DMs. Well, America is being caught up now. It's no more being known that she tender and delicate. These nations are saying like, damn, you've been doing all this wickedness, lying, right? You you want to come over here talking about how, he, how we rule our people, but look at how you rule your people. You, you trying to push democracy in our land, but it's clearly ain't even working for you. The point is, America is being found out. Right? It says, take thy millstone and grind mill, uncover the locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yet thy shame shall be seen. It's being known now that you really a hoe. 
right? And that you look, your pictures was Photoshop. <laughs> American pictures was Photoshop, man. You know? You ain't really what you said you was. You know? You ain't really acting how you used to be acting. Your true colors being shown now. Right? And everybody got something against you. And look, it's, in America, ain't just, we ain't just talking about just America, the land thereof. No. A, a, a nation have a people ruling over, just like Pharaoh and them Hamites, when the Egyptians was in rulership, yeah, them Hamites was in power. So on and so forth. Well, who's the nation in power as Babylon the greatest ruling? That's them so-called uh, white people, man, the Edomites. So look, they shame is being shown that they the wicked and their nation got to go out by fire, man. But um, I'm pulling up so we can park. And uh, let's see what else we can get, though. Like I said, it's a little impromptu. <clears throat> Just want to touch on. But let's get Revelation 17. Let's turn that car. Let's get Revelation 17. <clears throat> it's Revelation 17 going into that great hall. You know, that John, uh, John the Apostle scene. So this Revelation 17 and 1, it says, And there came one of the... <clears throat> so like it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying, Unto me, come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great hall that sitteth upon many waters, many peoples, many nations. And that's Babylon the Great, which is that great city. But it's, it's called her a whore, not a whore, but a great whore. <laughs> a great whore, man. It says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornications, right? Doing, again, doing different deals in America, do them and break them. And then blame the other nation for the reason they broke it. <laughs> it says, and the inhabitants of the earth have, be, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And the main one is their democracy. And along with that, you got the way of life, that Americanization. Because this is what America do. They'll, look, come into your nation, and they'll give you a, look, an ultimatum. Look, <clears throat> they'll say you can follow our ways, and if not, we're just going to have to take you out. So if you do it, cool. If not, they'll take you out. A good example is an economic hitman. They'll take you out, and then what they'll do, they'll set up somebody, a new leader, a puppet leader, who look just like the people of that country, so you won't think nothing of it, but... America in the back pocket, they're doing everything America want. And then eventually you'll see a rainbow flag, marriage is accepted, right? Women going, working, and doing women's lib is accepted. Wickedness is pushed because uh, America is showing, what? Again, what it said right here? And the inhabitants of the, of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication with her way of life. And so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's that NATO and the EU. But America's in main control of it. And the woman, now I was about to describe. Now look, when you read this, Apostle John, he actually saw a woman. He was seeing a vision, a woman literally sitting on a beast. But it meant something. Now, that woman... uh symbolizes America. Now, how I was about to describe this woman, how he seen her, that's the characteristics of the mindset of these people, man. The way of life here. So it says, and a woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And you know, purple, usually in the ancient world, only your kings, your nobles wore that. You know? It says, uh, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. So she looked good. <laughs> she looked good. She had that outward appearance like she was good, like a virgin. <laughs> when she start taking them clothes, hey, you know, itching. It says, <laughs> and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having what? Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So she looked good, but what she coming with ain't good. Just like a whole today, she might look good. Like, like the, uh, the elder brother and I account. The elder brother, Masia, I remember when I first came into the camp, he always used to say, hey, Hey, brothers, you know, talking to, you know, a younger brother says like, hey, just because you can, a woman, you can get her, you know, you can get her and, and you know, ha and have sex with her. Don't mean you have to get her just because you can get her. Don't mean you have to get her. You feel me? <laughs> just because it's that easy to get her don't mean you have to. Why? Because look, you ain't you because she got demons on her for one. 
<laughs> you don't know how many other dudes she got on her phone, so on and so forth. Well, that's America. Just because she look good don't mean you got to gotta DM her, you know? You got to live that life that she, she wants you to live. Hey, think about women. You want to find women, you change your whole lifestyle for her. You know, wearing different clothes to, to please her, taking her out to different places and, you know, and keeping up with the Joneses, in other words. Well, look, if you want to please this hoe, you got to get down with that way of life. Rainbow flag supporters is okay with you if you down with this place, right? Adultery is, is running rampant here. So if you get down with America, you're down with that, that abomination and the filth. It says, and upon her head was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, <laughs> right? And abominations of the earth. And you know that, it remind me of, um, it's a law in Leviticus, going into the priest, the priest's daughter. As we just read the daughter of Babylon, the priest's daughter. Now, this is an actual law in our scriptures, how the priests, if they had a daughter, just like a pastor today, usually the pastor daughters, the hoes. <laughs> but it said, if a priest's daughter, in our law, if a priest, if his daughter turned into a hoe, then she got to be burnt. Well, look, let's take, look, spiritually looking at that law. Now, we know Esau Edom ain't no priest, right? But he's portraying himself to be how? What proves that? Psalm 50. It says that he took the, the book, the most high word in his, in his mouth. Now, you go, I believe it's Malachi. I believe Michael Malachi says that the priest's lips shall keep knowledge. So if uh, America took the book, had the truth, under, or knew the law of the Most High, because it says the wicked, right? Matter of fact, let's read it real quick. Let's 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 read it. So like we gonna go back to that Revelation 17. So like I'm all over the place, it's a little impromptu, you know. But uh, what I about to get? Um, yeah, Psalms 50 real quick. Let's get Psalms 50 because this is what Esau did. Uh. Yeah, Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, <clears throat> Salaki. Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, the, which is the Edomites, the most high self, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? So Esau is likening himself unto, unto the, the servants of the priest. So therefore, your actions should be up to par with what a priest should do. Now, when you go into Leviticus 21 for that law, since says, look, Esau took the word, took the books. He knew the way, the right way, but he didn't do it. Just like a, the daughter of a priest, she should know the right way because of her father. Well, the daughter of Esau, his main place of rulership is Babylon the Great. So what got to happen to her according to the law? Because... The, the the ruler of the house, Esau, like the, the father supposed to be the ruler of his house, the ruler of the house didn't apply the law. What got to happen to that daughter? Because now she is a hoe. There's Leviticus 21 and 9. And the daughter, which is again, America is likened to the daughter of Babylon. It says, and the daughter of any priest. And Esau took the words of the Lord in his mouth. It says, and the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, by playing the whore, what's the judgment? She shall, she profane of her father, she shall be burnt with fire because she played the whore. If you, even if you look at a whore today, if she play a whore, she eventually going to be burning down now. STDs, pregnant, so on and so forth. You know, but mainly, you know, that burning sensation. <laughs> she eventually going to get that for being a whore. Many dudes, unprotected. Well, the same thing will happen to America for playing that hole. She going to burn, but it ain't just no STD. No, you going to be burned by fire, literal fire, man. Right? Let's let's go back to Revelation 17. Let's find out what's going to happen to this hole. And five, and upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the, the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, a much duff of the, the apple of the Lord's eye was, was shed here. That's another reason they got to get burnt and cleansed. And with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. She looked good, right? America looked good, especially if you live in another nation. It seemed good. John, the apostle, he like, damn, he thought she was fine. Probably had, you know, the BBL, the fat ass, breast implants, probably had the big lips, 
You know, dimples, <laughs> right? The, uh, the, the cumbrellas, <laughs> like the apostles talk about in their lives, sort of long eyelashes. Come on, man. She look good, decked out, but this is the thing. Once you once she be uncovered and, and that that she be shown, it's gonna be shown she ain't good. That's why the the angel said, What you marveling for? Let me show you her judgment to show she ain't good. Let's jump down. Let's jump down. Uh let's find out her judgment. Now we still in Revelation 17. We'll just jump down a bit. Revelation 17. And straight to the point, verse 15. And, and he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, which the waters, well, it's about to say it. It says that he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sittest. <laughs> All right. You know, it says the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Look how many people she got in the DMs. Hey. <laughs> Look how many people this whole got in the DMs. Everybody, nations, tongues, multitudes, right? Look how many people she, you know, commit fornication with. And because of that, it says, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon a beast, which is America allies, it says, these shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and what and burn her. With fire. That's what it's coming to. This one they realize down. We we got the short end of the stick this whole time. This place haven't been for our profit. And eventually the Lord will have everybody, enemies, and allies turn against America. Like it said in Obadiah, the ones who, who ate bread with thee, they should lay a wound against thee. Roughly paraphrase the right, the ones who was in in, in cahoots with you. Now it's gonna be against you. Right? You know, it says, uh, right. And the ten horn, which thou sawest upon the beast, thee shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked, stripped her, went through a phone, <laughs> went through a phone, seen everything. It says, uh, and she'll, and make her naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And how they go burn her with fire? The missiles. Let's get Jeremiah real quick. Let's get Jeremiah. Is it 50, 51? Just how America go burn with fire, angels go burn. No, it's a way the law gonna have it that it's gonna have to be played out in the earth. And the missiles ain't being made for no reason. They gonna be used, man. Let's get it. This is, uh, oh, we still get Revelation 18 as well. But let's get this. Um,. All right, let's let's we go jump around in Jeremiah 50, 51. In Jeremiah 51 and 9, it says, For lo, and this is gonna happen in Babylon, which you see nations already coming against America. It says, For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, which is talking about this Babylon, America, not the ancient, an assembly of great nations, enemies and allies, starting with Russia, from the north country, right? See. And they shall set themselves in array against her. Everybody against her now. It says, from thence shall she be taken. And their arrows, what's the arrows? Is it talking about literal arrows? No. You know, the prophets back then, they had a terminology we have. They couldn't say ICBMs and, and intercontinental ballistic missiles and hypersonic missiles. No, they described it the best way they can. When you look at an arrow, what it look like? I mean, when you look at a missile, what it look like? An arrow, man. A dart of some sort. And it says, Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man, and none shall return in vain. Verse 14. It says, Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about all ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Missiles, man, a day of destruction. Shoot at her and spare no arrows, for she have sinned against your hour. Shout against her round about, for she have given her hand. Her foundations are falling, right? Huh. And it says her walls are thrown down. <laughs> Think about a hole. Hey, <laughs> like throwing a weenie down a, a weenie down a hallway. Them walls broken down. But looking at that nine times, right? A spiritual hole that's talking about, look, you ain't got no defense. You see? You getting utterly penetrated, man. 
missiles. You know? From from the <laughs> from the from the base to the head. Missile. Well, hey, well, the scripture says the head. The head, man. Penetrating. The head is where it got that power at, that fire, that force. Them warheads are the missiles. You see? But she was a virgin, and then one day she could be utterly ran through. Think about that. You got a virgin, a so-called virgin. You got a virgin, and one day you just just raped, just taken, ran through like that woman in Judges, penetrated. Next day, just cut up and just destroy you, man. Nothing going to be love here in America. This is the judgment for a hole, fire. All right? Holes eventually get burnt. And it says, for her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of Yahweh to avenge his opponent as she have done doing to her. As America drop bombs on people, drop bombs on her. You see? And it says, verse 39, there are four of the wild beasts of the desert with the beasts of the island shall dwell there. And the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. And as the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, how, how the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah? With what? All right, let's go to the account. All right, let's go to the account real quick. This is uh, Genesis 19, straight to the point. This is how the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So this is going to be the same way Babylon the Great, or the virgin daughter of Babylon, or that great city, or as we know it, America. This is how America will be taken out. As we've been reading with those arrows that's going to be shot from the other nations, which the modern day name for that is missiles. But let's see how Sodom and Gomorrah was taken out. This is Genesis 19 and 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then Yahweh reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. From Yahweh out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew up on the ground. So the Lord sent fire and brimstone down, just falling. But now he got it, fire and brimstone gonna fall again, but now it's just put into a missile. This is how America will be taken out. Those missiles gonna be shot. Let's get that in a second. They're just from one earth, side of the earth to another. That's why it's called intercontinental. Ballistic missiles. Just go from one continent to another to hit the other continent. <laughs> In second edge of 16. Second edge of 16, straight to the point. And 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. What's the bow? The, well, those silos. You know, the missile they gotta come out that 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 silo. It says, for strong is his right hand that bend of the bow. And you look at silos, they usually like on the back of a truck or something, they'll are, they are point it. They'll aim to the, uh, bend the silo to aim somewhere. They bend in the bow. It says, but his arrows, right, that come out of the silo, his, and again, we reading this, but back then they didn't, they, they didn't have the, the, the wordplay like we have. So we got to uh, break down what they seen with our terminology, man. So it says, for strong as his right hand that bend of the bow, his arrows that he shoot of are sharp, and which the next part gonna prove is not regular arrows. It says, and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. That's intercontinental ballistic missiles. Once they shot, they leave the atmosphere and fall in the atmosphere upon its target. A regular arrow can't do that. You know, I don't care how bad of an archer you is, you ain't about to stand on a, the shores of Africa, West Africa, and shoot them to, uh, you know. Miami, Florida. <laughs> no, but a missile can do that. And it goes on to say, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled. So these, these arrows ain't just coming. They're coming with fire. It says the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till the consuming the foundations of the earth, but mainly America. Let's get this Revelation 18 and I'll end it. Revelation 18. Touching on that uh, whore. It says, um, two, and he cried moderately with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils, which you've been reading the whole time after it's destroyed, and the whole of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the fornication, wine of the wrath of a fornication. See, everybody slept with her, right? 
was in with on some point, whether it's laws, trade deals, whatever. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, double unto her according to her works. And the cup which she have filled, filled to her double. How much she have glorified and lived deliciously, lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, and your heart in the Hebrew, that's your mind, lob. So the mindset of these Americans is this. She said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And these Americans truly think nothing ever going to happen here. That's why I said that city that dwellers without care, man. It says, therefore, shall her plays come in one day. And it only going to take one event for all help to break loose. Look what happened on 9-11. It was one event. Look how it changed the course of not just America, but even the world. Now, I was young, but, you know, you see, should I see the effects of it today? <laughs> you know? But America, they live in their comfort, but it's going to take one little false flag to pop all this shit off. It says, for therefore her place come in one day, death, mourning, famine, and what? And she shall be utterly burnt with fire. The judgment of a whole eventually go get burnt. For strong is Yahweh, power who judge of her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, <laughs> standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment coming. That's a literal 60 minutes. 60 minutes, man. This place will be in fire. And it says, uh, 18, and they cried when they saw the smoke of a burning sand. What city is like unto this great city? What city is like unto America today? Let's be real. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made rich. All like they yeah, America was they hey, they was pimps. <laughs> America, hey, the other nations was pimping this whole man, getting rich out this whole. It says, Wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of our costliness. For in one hour is her desolation, man. And that's what we waiting on. One hour, man. This whole go burn. You know? But look, with that law, willing this lesson was that if I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Chakwadash. A double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you rocking, my dog, pushing this word with all truth and sincerity to all you believers out there who believe in the gospel. Keep fighting, keep pushing. And with that, Shalom.